Hi everyone, let's talk about forecasting in Salesforce. Now, forecasting isn't anything to be scared of. I know that it can seem intimidating, but we're gonna break it down to some of the terminology and the basics here. First of all, let's start with a definition of forecasting. What is a forecast anyway? Well, a forecast is basically just an expression of expected sales. It's what we are expecting to make. And a collaborative forecast, which you may have heard of, is just the name for Salesforce's forecasting tool. It's nothing complicated there. You can kind of think of it like a roll-up of currency or quantity that's based on a set of dimensions. And these dimensions are a measure, a data type, and a hierarchy. And based on those dimensions, it's going to control the output of our forecast. Now this is important because we often want to forecast different areas of the business. So by changing the measure, the data type, and the hierarchy, we can control that output. Now when we go to create a forecast, we always base it off a forecast type. And there are four forecast types to choose from. The first forecast type is an opportunity. And this is a standard forecast type. Just your standard forecast, nothing special there. Our next forecast type is the opportunity split forecast type. And we would use this if you wanted to forecast some shares of revenue from different opportunities that have been worked together on by a team. Or if you wanted to give team members different credit for helping to close deals. If you're splitting up your opportunities in that form, either by revenue or by credit, and you want to forecast on those, then the forecast type that you're going to want to use is the opportunity split. Our next forecast type is the opportunity product. We'd use the opportunity product forecast type if your company groups its products and services together in families. So for example, you may be a tech company and you might sell software and hardware, different types of each, but you might use software and hardware as the product families. And if you wanted to forecast based on those families, then you'd use the opportunity product forecast type. Our fourth forecast type is the opportunity schedule. And we'd use the opportunity schedule if we want to forecast by the schedule date. Now, what is the schedule date? Well, for example, let's say that we have an opportunity that we win, yay, <laughs> and it's got a close date of June the 30th. Okay, the whole opportunity is worth $12,000, but it's actually made up of $1,000 of revenue scheduled monthly. So the whole kind of $12,000 is split up over 12 months with $1,000 coming in every month, but we actually close the sale on June the 30th. So if we forecast by close date, which is the standard way to do it, then our forecast for the month of June are going to include $12,000 for that entire opportunity because that's the date that we won that deal. But if you forecast by schedule date, then the forecast for the month of June is just going to be $1,000 because you're only getting $1,000 in the bank for that opportunity in that month. So it's up to you if you want to forecast by close date or schedule date, but if you do want to forecast by schedule date, then your forecast type will need to be that of an opportunity schedule. Now we do have a very special fifth type of forecast. I know I said four to begin with, but we have a little bonus one here, and that's called territory forecasts. So territory forecasts give your team a snapshot of how expected sales are going to compare between territories. It's pretty self-explanatory really, but it's used if you want to know which territory has the most closed deals in one particular month, which territory is lagging behind in software deals, if you want to know anything about forecasts when you're comparing between territories, then you're going to want to use a territory forecast. Now, we base these forecasts on your territory hierarchy and never the role hierarchy, which the other forecast types are based on by default. The territory forecast has a special formula which you need to have set up in order for this to work, and it's got three different parts. The first part is you must have enterprise territory management set up, the second part is you must be using collaborative forecasts, which is Salesforce's forecasting tool in Lightning. And the third part is that you must be using Lightning Experience. Now these all sound kind of fancy and, and quite, I don't know, advanced setup features, but the reality is, is that you're going to have most of these set up by default anyway. 
If you're using territories at all, then enterprise territory management is already going to be set up. Your Salesforce admin will have had to have set it up to even test territory models before they implement them. It lets you link territories to accounts and opportunities and gives you reports that will help you to organize all of your reporting based on those territories. So the bottom line is that if you're using territories, you've already got enterprise territory management set up. Collaborative forecasts we're using already because we're doing forecasting and lightning experience is very widely used across Salesforce anyway. So now that we've had a good talk about forecast types, let's get into forecast categories. So forecast categories are a different kettle of fish and they allow us to view forecasts based on how confident we are that we're actually going to end up hitting that forecast. Are we 30% sure that we're going to hit that forecast? Well, let's see how much we'd actually make if we included everything that we're 30% sure we're going to get. That doesn't sound very good. How about 70%? What if we included everything that we were 70% sure we're going to get? How much would that be? What about 90%? What about everything that we're 100% sure we're going to get? Now you might be wondering, how on earth can we measure how confident we are how do we know how much 100% confident is in a forecast? Well, if you think about it, to be 100% confident that you're going to be making this money or making this quantity of a product, the deal has to have already been won. <laughs> I mean, you're 100% confident. There can't be anything that goes wrong. So the opportunity has to have already been closed one. And that's exactly the same case with forecast categories. You see, forecast categories are based on the stages of our opportunities. If an opportunity is close one, then we're 100% confident that we have that forecast. If an opportunity is right back in the beginning stage, we might only be 30% sure that we're going to close win it. All our forecast categories are doing is basically assigning certain percentages to each of those stages so that we can forecast based on how confident we are that we're going to actually hit those targets. There are four forecast categories. The first is open pipeline. This category is for opportunities that are currently just in the whole pipeline and need further work. So this pipeline is including everything. So this forecast category is including everything. Our next category is best case forecast. And this is for opportunities that are on their way and we're pretty sure they're gonna close, about 30 to 50% sure that we're gonna close these ones. It's the best case forecast. Our third type of forecast category is the commit forecast. And in this forecast category, you can expect that you're gonna win about 90% of these opportunities. So it's pretty, pretty close to being, you know, all there. And our final forecast category is the close only forecast category. And the closed only one is for opportunities that we've already won. So we are 100% sure that this is what we are forecasted to make in these coming months. So to summarize, I know we've covered a lot on forecasting, but forecasts are an expression of expected sales in the future. Our forecast types define what we are measuring, the data type that we are using, and whether we're basing it on territory or user roles. And our forecast categories are a way to group forecasts by how confident we are that they're going to come true.